This module details the equipment and procedural standards which must be met in order to ensure the best possible protection from falls. Legislation describes the standard or standards that each component of a fall protection system must meet. Leading the way are recognized standards such as the Canadian Standards Association, the CSA, and the American National Standards Institute, ANSI. The European Committee for Standardization is also recognized as acceptable on equipment made on or after July 1, 2009. Inclusion of this equipment, especially when mixed with CSA gear, should only be done by those well-versed in these alternative standards. The Occupational Health and Safety Code requires employers to ensure the equipment on a job site meets one of these standards. The OH&S Code further requires employers to ensure that workers are aware of hazards and are trained in the safe use of fall protection systems before allowing them to work in areas where it's required. A fall protection system must be used if a worker not protected by guardrails may fall a vertical distance of 3 meters, 10 feet or more, from the level of the feet to a lower level. A vertical distance of less than 3 meters, 10 feet, if there is an unusual possibility of injury. That means that the injury would be worse than from falling on a flat surface. Into or onto a hazardous substance or situation, such as moving traffic or water, or an object, such as operating machinery, or through an opening in a work surface. When assessing the hazards on the work site, the first approach should always be elimination. If elimination is not possible, then the use of a control method must be implemented. The first level of fall protection required by legislation is an engineered control, such as a guardrail. This addition to a work site eliminates the hazard by preventing a worker from getting to a location from which he or she could fall. If, however, guardrails aren't reasonably practicable, the person at risk of falling in the course of work must be protected with a travel restraint system. It consists of an anchoring point, a connector, and a harness. It allows a worker to go far enough to reach an unprotected edge, but not enough to fall over it. If a travel restraint is not reasonably practicable, the code states workers must use a personal fall arrest system. If a personal fall arrest system is not practicable, then an equally effective means must be used. A fall arrest system also includes a harness connector and a lanyard equipped with a shock absorber if possible. It's designed to arrest a fall in progress. More about this in the equipment components of fall arrest and travel restraint systems in the next module. Safety nets are a passive form of fall protection. A netting system is placed below the work area to catch workers in case they fall. Take note, this is a personal safety net system, not one intended to catch debris. Used in conjunction with scaffolding and end caps, it can offer multiple safety measures. A control zone is another method of fall protection for workers within two meters of an unguarded edge. The control zone is set out by installing a raised warning line or something equivalent. If any work is being conducted within the control zone itself, a travel restraint or fall arrest system must be used. As mentioned, the oh &S code requires that workers be trained in the safe use of fall protection equipment and procedures. This video complements training. To be competent and qualified, you must have hands-on training and experience.